The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis is an American sitcom that aired from 1959 to 63. It followed the life of Dobie Gillis, a teen constantly in pursuit of love and money. Behind the scenes, the show had some interesting facts that contributed to its success. Join us as Facts First presents huge details you missed in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis. How it came to be The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was based on a series of short stories written by Max Shulman, who also created the characters and wrote many of the episodes. The show's title character, Dobie Gillis, was played by actor Dwayne Hickman. Hickman was only 24 years old when the show premiered, but played a teenage high school student for the entire run of the series. The show made Bob Denver a star. Bob Denver, who later gained fame as Gilligan on Gilligan's Island, played Dobie's best friend, Maynard G. Krebs. Denver's character was a beatnik, obsessed with coffee, cigarettes, and avoiding work. When Bob was hired to play a small role in the pilot episode, titled Caper at the Bijou, it was only meant as a one-time appearance. But his performance was so well received, the producers decided to make him a regular cast member. Denver's portrayal of Maynard G. Krebs was a standout from the start. He brought a unique perspective and style to the character, making him a fan favorite. He was known for his signature phrase, like, wow, man. He was known for his beatnik style, famously including a goatee that he never shaved. While Maynard's goatee was a defining aspect of the character, it also made the show somewhat unrealistic. In the 1950s and early 60s, it was considered unusual for a man to wear a beard or goatee. In fact, many workplaces had strict rules against facial hair. Additionally, the show was set in a high school and later in college, where strict grooming standards were often enforced. It seems unlikely Maynard would have been allowed to keep his goatee throughout his entire academic career. The fact of Maynard's goatee became even more egregious in an episode where he and Dobie joined the army. Of course, new recruits are always forced to shave. It's no coincidence that Bob Denver's character joined the army as the performer was drafted into the army in real life. In fact, this almost made it so the performer was going to have to leave the show. Denver was drafted into the army in 1959, shortly after the second season of The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis had wrapped. He was ordered to report to Fort Ord in California for basic training, which would have meant leaving the show and potentially ending his acting career. But Denver was able to negotiate a deferment with the Army, allowing him to continue working on the show. He was granted a six-month deferment to complete filming of the third season and then another six-month deferment to start filming the fourth. During this time, he continued to work on the show while also attending Army Reserve meetings on weekends. He was eventually honorably discharged from the Army in 1961 after serving two years in the reserves. The experience of nearly losing his career to the draft had a profound impact on Denver, who later became an outspoken anti-war activist. He even wrote a song called The Draft Dodger Rag, which became a hit for folk singer Phil Oakes. Despite these challenges, Bob Denver was able to continue working on the show. Dwayne Hickman had musical talent in real life. Besides Dobie and Maynard, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis was known for its colorful and eccentric cast of characters, including Dobie's various love interests. Some of the actresses who played these roles went on to become famous in their own right, including Tuesday Weld, Yvonne Craig, and Sally Kellerman. The show was also notable for its use of music. Each episode featured a musical number performed by Dobie or one of the other characters. The show's theme song, The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis, was written by Lionel Newman and sung by a chorus of teenage girls. Dwayne Hickman was not just a talented actor, but also a musician. In the early 60s, after the success of the show, he decided to cash in on his fame and released a few records. Hickman's first record was School Dance in 1960, which was a catchy, upbeat tune about the excitement of going to a school dance. The song was released by Capitol Records and became a hit, reaching the Billboard Hot 100 chart. His second record, Chicky Run, was also released in 1960 and was another fun, danceable tune that capitalized on the teenage culture of the time. In 1961, Hickman released his third and final record, Bucket and Skinner's Theme, which was the theme song for a short-lived TV series of the same name. The song was a departure from Hickman's previous records and had more of a surf rock feel to it. There was a Dobie Gillis comic book. Many famous stars appeared on The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis's guests, including Warren Beatty, Ryan O'Neill, Barbara Bain, and Robert Redford. There was also a comic book based on the show. 
In 1960, DC Comics began publishing Adobe Gillis comic book series. The series ran for 26 issues from 1960 to 64. The comics were written by Arnold Drake and drawn by Bob Oxner. The stories followed Dobie and his friends as they navigated high school life and their various romantic entanglements. One thing that set the comics apart from the show was the addition of supernatural elements. In the comics, Dobie and his friends would often encounter ghosts, werewolves, and other monsters. These elements were likely added to appeal to the young readers, who were the primary audience for comic books at the time. The comics also featured guest appearances from other DC Comics characters like Superman and Batman. These crossovers were not uncommon in comics at the time, as publishers were always looking for ways to boost sales and cross-promote their properties. Dobie Gillis inspired Scooby-Doo Despite the popularity it found in its earlier years, The Many Lives of Dobie Gillis was canceled after four seasons due to declining ratings. But it remains a beloved classic of 1960s television, and it's been praised for its witty writing, memorable characters, and innovative use of music. The show has lived on in many ways, including the fact that it inspired the creation of Scooby-Doo. The influence of the many loves of Dobie Gillis on Scooby-Doo can perhaps be seen most obviously in the character of Shaggy. Shaggy was created as a direct homage to Bob Denver's Maynard G. Krebs, and the two characters share many similarities. Both are laid-back, peace-loving, and often hungry. They both have a distinctive fashion sense, with Shaggy sporting a green shirt and brown pants, and Maynard wearing a black turtleneck and beret. Both characters have a unique way of talking, with Shaggy's catchphrase, zoinks, being similar to Maynard's use of like wow and doby doby doby. In addition to Shaggy, other aspects of the show can be seen in Scooby-Doo. The show's focus on a group of teenagers solving mysteries and getting into hijinks was similar to the premise of Scooby-Doo, and the use of music and humor to lighten the mood was also a shared element. The show nearly had a few spin-offs. Besides influencing Scooby-Doo, The Many Lives of Dobie Gillis also nearly had a few direct spin-offs, though they never came to fruition. Towards the end of the show's run, the producers were considering one that would focus on Maynard. It would have been called The Many Loves of Maynard G. Krebs and would have followed Maynard's adventures as he traveled the country in search of adventure and romance. It would have been a departure from the original series set in high school, but it was never made. According to reports, the execs at CBS were not interested in the spinoff. They felt Maynard was too unconventional and risky for a lead character on a television series. Another proposed spinoff would have focused on the character of Zelda. Zelda Gilroy, played by Sheila James, was Dobie's best friend and love interest. She was a feminist before the term even existed. The proposed spinoff was simply called Zelda, and it was developed by creator Max Schulman himself. Unfortunately, that spinoff never came to fruition either. Now it's time to hear from you. Were any of these facts about the many loves of Dobie Gillis surprising to hear? Let us know in the comments section below.